Tech Cocktail Sessions, educational and inspirational talks from experienced startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. Uh, we've got Ed Boland. He's, a, he's our speaker tonight. He's going to do a, a special lightning talk tonight. Um, hopefully no thunder because we want it to clear up. But we've got Ed Bowling. He's the principal at Scout Ventures. Um, so Scout Ventures actually was started in New York. Um, it's a, a fund that – it's an early stage investment fund. Um, and they've taken about $10 million and invested in about 50 companies, 51 I'd say. Uh, and they're you know, continuing to do that in New York and other places. But we now have a person here in Miami – Ed, who's going to be helping make that happen here. So early stage startups definitely want to put this on your radar. Um, and Ed comes from uh, JP Morgan, where he was, uh, yeah, he was doing uh, private, basically private banking, things like that. He also has a reporter and columnist background. He's a writer, so we may have to tap you for that soon <laughs> as well. Uh, but yeah, we're super excited to have him here, and he's going to share some of his insights. So let's hear it for Ed. Thanks so much. Oh, and uh, congratulations on your uh, first year in Miami. You guys have been tremendous, um, and you're uh, an incredible resource. So uh, we're, we're certainly happy you're here, and we hope you're here for a, a long time to come. You're doing a great job. So, um, so um, <clears throat> my name's Ed Bolin. I'm a principal at Scout Ventures. Um, Scout is an early-stage investment firm uh, based out of New York City. We've got uh, about over $10 million deployed in about 50... 51, 52 companies across the country um, and employed over 1,000 people. Uh, it was founded in 2010 by uh, Brad Harrison. And one of the things that Brad has always had an interest in is emerging ecosystems. And how Scout got to Miami is to touch a little bit on my, on my background is um, I was in the private banking world and I was looking for a niche to cover um, as I kind of tried to make my career. And um, all the traditional industries, healthcare, law, real estate here in Miami, you know, they, they were very, very crowded. And I, I started, I read a few articles about the emerging tech ecosystem in Miami. And I thought, oh, wow, I can, you know, I'll be the tech banker. That sounds cool. Um, so I called, there was a, individual mentioned each story, a gentleman who a lot of you probably know by the name of Juan Pablo Capello. So I didn't know him, um, but I picked up the phone and gave him a call. Uh, he was at uh, Greenberg at the time. And I said, I'm interested in this. Let me uh, tell me more about it. So I met with Juan. Um, he was very gracious to meet me. And he said, oh, Simon's coming up in a month. You have to go to that. You have to go down to the lab. You have to meet this person and this person and this person. And I started to get immersed in the scene. And the deeper I got immersed, the more I realized that um, what's happening here is going to change Miami uh, and South Florida. Um, and it's going to move us from a service-based economy to a knowledge-based economy. And uh, for someone who lives down here and is um, raising a family down here, the implications of that are, are huge. And the opportunity, I think, is, is just as huge. So I decided then, you know, I didn't want to be a service provider in that area. I wanted to help push it forward. And, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say I'm an, uh, I'm an apostle of the gospel of Manny Medina and the gospel of Matt Hagman. You know, I'm, I'm fully vested. And <clears throat> from my background in banking, I realized that there wasn't a way for people to get involved in this um, outside of direct investment. And the entrepreneur's lament here in South Florida is always that there's a tremendous amount of wealth here, but why is it that companies uh, have difficult getting funding? Um, and my belief is that there hasn't been the right vehicle um, where you can have investors who are inter interested in this get involved in a risk-diversified manner. So I wanted to partner with a fund. And I was in talks with people locally to maybe do something like that. But the challenge there is no one in Miami had ever done it. Um, so in late August, a friend of mine who's got a great company incubated out of Rocker Labs did what most Miami entrepreneurs need to do uh, when they're looking for money is he left town. And he met with a number of um, VC firms in New York and came back and said, you, guys, you need to meet Brad at Scout Ventures. Um, Scout is an early stage investment company. Seed invests, so anywhere between fifty dollars and $500,000, and really the bridge between angel and institutional. And I thought, that's a perfect place for Miami. And 
Um, so I emailed Brad, emails turned into phone calls. Um, we, were, we were having a great discussion, and then at the end of August, he stopped and said, all right, I have to go to Burning Man for a week and a half, so let's pick this up as soon as I get back. And that's when I realized I wasn't in banking anymore. Um, so when, I, when he came back, uh, he said, what would this look like? Send me a plan. So I sent him a plan, and he said, come up to New York. I came up to New York and meet the, met the team, spent a half a day at the office, and uh, said that, and he said, you know, you're not leaving here without signing a contract to open uh, Scout Ventures in Miami. And he hadn't, he hadn't been in Miami in 15 years, so I think I, I must have sold it pretty hard. But when he came down here after his first trip, um, you know, we had introduced him to the Knight Foundation and Medina Capital and the Lab and the Venture Hive, and he he went around and talked to a lot of people and entrepreneurs, and he said, you know, this feels like New York did five years ago, um, you know, and I see all the pieces here. So we're incredibly excited to be here, uh, and we're, incredi we're incredibly excited to help people get involved in what's going on here. Um, venture capital is a incredibly under-allocated asset class here in Miami, and um, we're helping tell the story of why people should be looking at this. If I, if I step back into my, my banker role and look at it from a strategic portfolio allocation uh, standpoint, you know, it makes sense to be invested in venture capital. It's, it's a risky investment, there's no doubt about that, but if you can do it with a smart manager in a diversified way, you, know, you can generate real returns. Um, and you look at recent trends in the public markets um, where companies like um, a decade ago, companies like Amazon and eBay, they went uh, public after two years. Um, Facebook and Twitter, um, they, they stayed private for seven years. So you have five to six years of extra value generation that you can't access through the public markets. Um, and also, once these companies do go public, they're at such a high valuation. Uh, you look at a company like Alibaba, who had, I think, a 240 billion dollar market cap when it went public. Now, if that stock were to have the same appreciation as a, um, a Cisco or a, a Microsoft, its market cap would have to rise to over $20 trillion. You know, it's, so really, how much room do you have there um, to generate value? If you invested in Google on its IPO day, you'd be up 10 times your money, which, which sounds good, but if you invested in Amazon, you'd be up over 175% of your money. So what we find here is a high net worth community that is using kind of an investment strategy that's probably geared towards markets five or 10 years ago. And I think the more we have those conversations, the more capital we can unlock uh, in South Florida. And one of the things I'm particularly excited about with Scout is one of the special things in, we're able to do is all of our LPs um, are eligible to co-invest on any deal uh, provided that there's room. So we can access high net worth individuals, families, you know, and maybe they don't have a venture allocation and maybe they want to put a million dollars to work in venture. Um, and what, how they can do that is they could put half a million with Scout and then save half a million in dry powder. And what Scout then becomes is what Brad likes to call a venture consigliere. Um, we can advise them on their deals. You know, we can, we will see their deal flow, um, and we can help them make the decisions. So, imagine unlocking that capital here in South Florida. You would just take a sliver of the high net worth community that's down here to do that. Um, and I don't think any good company would ever have to leave South Florida um, to find funding. So that's one of the things we're tremendously excited about. Um, Scout, and just I know a lot of you are entrepreneurs and um, are kind of interested in what we look for in companies, um, so I can talk a little bit about that. Um, generally, as I said, we come in as the link between angel and institutional, generally writing checks anywhere between fifty and five hundred thousand uh, dollars. We like seasoned entrepreneurs. Uh, usually, a company has come to us uh, after it's pivoted uh, once or twice. Um, we like um, B2C subscription services or B2B SaaS services. Um, we like entrepreneurs who have a, a veteran team around them. Um, one of the things we find in Miami is that um, 
a lot of the companies have very localized advisory boards and a very um, kind of opportunistic sales pipeline. Like, you know, I know someone at Carnival and Burger King. Uh, what we prefer to see is a broadened uh, advisory board made up of industry experts outside uh, South Florida and then a real thoughtful pipeline. Um, and if you're coming to us for capital, you know, you should have a clean cap table. We should know where exactly the money is going to be deployed and how long of a run rate that will give you. Um, so I'm not sure uh, how fast my lightning round needs to be. So um, I've, that's kind of a general overview. Um, I don't know if anyone has any specific questions or... Uh, yeah, there's a mic. If anyone has, has any questions or uh, wants to know a little bit about more about how we work with entrepreneurs or uh, investors? Um, the, the talent pool is, uh, it, it's, it's challenging but improving. But one of the things that we're very uh, bullish on, um, on Scout, and one of the reasons Scout is here is, um, I had mentioned emerging ecosystems. Um, you know, Scout had also, Scout looked at um, setting up a satellite in Cleveland, Detroit, Austin, but they liked Miami. And one of the reasons they liked Miami is because they had also looked at emerging ecosystems overseas in um, Singapore, uh, the Middle East, and India. But they decided Latin America was um, where they wanted to be. And one of the companies that um, is one of our major drivers of Fund One, um, and Fund One, j just a quick side note, um, one of the reasons why I'm excited to bring Scout down here is it's a manager with a, a proven track record. Our first fund is tracking at about a 5x uh, projected exit anywhere between three and eight times. So, you know, that, that's, a, that's a powerful value proposition for people. But um, to get back to your question on the talent side, the talent is improving, but one of the great resources by Miami is we can import talent quite easily. I mean, it, it's not a hard sell to get people to come here. And then we can also back end much of our um, talent in Latin America. One of our top companies, as I was going to say, in Fund One, uh, a company called Olapic, um, has their whole development office in um, Cordoba, Argentina. Um, entrepreneurs start in New York. Um, one of them, there were three Spaniards. One of them went down there. Uh, the tallest building in Cordoba is 12 stories. He rented the top floor, put a bunch of um, uh, foosballs and pool tables, and they have a great engineering college there. He hired a few people from the college and said, have your friends come out and hang out here. And pretty soon, every top engineer in Cordoba wanted to work for Olapic in, in their company. So uh, we're not going to be able to address talent in Miami like they are in, uh, in, in Boston and um, in Stanford and Silicon Valley with the schools, um, but we can address it in different ways. Uh, and, th and that's what we're doing. I think that's what continue, we'll continue to do. Well, one of the things, and especially in, in the seed series, uh, costs to grow and scale have come down to the point where you can really build great companies anywhere. Uh, and if you can build them anywhere, then, then why not Miami? And what Brad found as uh, as an investor, he was seeing, he, we started out as a mobile cloud, um, social, um, those were kind of the, the verticals, but we were seeing too many good deals. So we've really become industry agnostic, um, but revenue driven. So that's what we really look like. Does a company have a clear path to revenue? Uh, in Miami, we see a lot of, um, we see a lot of uh, financial tech geared towards Latin America. We see a lot of ed tech, um, which are all great. But for us, we concentrate on the opportunity, uh, the entrepreneur, and the model. So we're, we're pretty industry agnostic. Well, um, that's, that, that's the conversations we're having. And, uh, you know, for a lot of these high net worth families, and their, their assets are... are um, in whatever they know. I mean, they, they made their money in real estate or, or whatever it might be, but um, you have to show them but the potential value of addressing this industry in a strategic way. So uh, a lot of them aren't gonna do the angel route where you have to do your own due diligence, you have to negotiate deal terms, you have to do your own deal sourcing, but 
presenting them the opportunity to work with an emerging manager who has a successful track record. You know, our, like I said, our first fund is tracking at a 5x. Um, I say, listen, you can get these kind of returns if you approach this market in a strategic way. Um, you know, you have to... You have to get over the, you know, do it for it's because it's good for the um, good good for the ecosystem. You, no one's gonna put their money behind that um, because you know when you when you put your own money in something, it's one thing. When you ask someone to give them your money and it's your responsibility to manage it, that's that's a really awesome responsibility and it's one we take very seriously. So um, showing them that you're able to achieve these returns, you can do it in a strategic manner. Yes, it's risky, but it's like any risk asset, like a private equity or a, a real estate. Um, but you're, you want to do this because of, you know, the public markets are probably effective tools for income and wealth preservation. But if you want wealth generation, multi-generational, you really need to look to the private markets and venture capital should be part of that allocation. Yeah, absolutely. So Scout is not like m most VC firms. Um, you know, first of all, we're not assholes, which is kind of a differentiator we found. Um, <laughs> um, but we have a completely different approach. Um, we leverage our network. So for us, LPs are not just sources of capital. These are successful individuals who have a deep knowledge base in various fields. So we have LPs. Uh, we have 50 plus LPs, we have entrepreneurs, we have over 100 entrepreneurs, and then we have advisors. We have named advisors, you can go on the website, and we also have unnamed advisors who, for whatever reason, because they manage their own fund or they're at an uh, investment bank, they can't be named. But it's all part of a, a Scout's proprietary network of over um, 200 plus advisors. And when we work with entrepreneurs, we open our network. So w when we first take a meeting, you know, whether or not we invest in a company, we're going to say, oh, you, we're going to run it by this guy and this guy and have this guy and this girl um, get in touch with you. So immediately we're adding value um, without even deciding to do a deal. That also helps us. Um, not only do we, do we open our network, but it also helps us start the due diligence process. So we help entrepreneurs in two ways, which is opening our network on the business development side, and then also leveraging Scout's connections in the Series A network to bring the companies along and get them ready for the next step. And I think that's gonna be especially impactful here in Miami because um, there aren't a lot of direct roads to New York or Silicon Valley um, that's been here. You know, we, it's, you know, we're on the end of the peninsula, there's a strong angel network, but that network is kind of, um, insulated down here in Miami. What Scout does is bring a direct connection right to New York, right to Silicon Valley. So we, ha we can leverage those connections both on the business development side and then prepping for, for Series A. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, most, the most impressive startup we invested in was one that uh, 3D printed a car. And once we saw that, we, we, we basically threw money at them. Um, so that local motors is in, a, is in our, our second fund. But you know, the, the point of that is the, the most effective pitches is always a, 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 an effective demonstration. Um, you know, that, can, um, that, that can do something like a deck or a meeting can't, a can't do. But, more often than not, it's it's not a you you know it's not usually blown away right at the offset. It's the process of getting to know um, the entrepreneur. Um, you know, we go to their office, we get a sense. You know, we get a feel. Brad kind of has a sixth sense for this kind of thing. And you know, if if the vibe is right, and you know, we we can background check. That that's generally where we where we get really interesting. Um, it's very rare that you get a pitch where you're like, oh my God, I need to get into this deal right away. I mean, it's, it's, it's a process, it's due diligence, and it's kind of, like I said, it's a vibe we get. We, <laughs> we, we, like, we like equity. We, don't, we, we generally don't like convertibles, but I mean, they're so common nowadays that you know, we, we see it all the time. But you know, we're, we're, we're equity. Uh, we also go in for advisory shares. Um, and oftentimes, um, what we do is very often we've had situations in our companies where they're prepping for Series A, but we're going to participate in, but they need another two or three months to get there. 
Um, so we've found it very effective where we've, um, we've actually said, all right, we're going to participate in the Series A. We'll give you some of that money now to get you there, and we negotiate warrant coverage for that. So it's a better deal for us, and we can return more to our investors. So we're, we're flexible, and we like to work with the entrepreneurs that we want, because if we have a company in our portfolio, we want to make sure we we're going to do everything that we can to make sure it's successful for us and for our investors. All right, if you want to learn more, you can always check out the website, scoutventures.com. And um, thank you very much for the opportunity.